Hi, my name is Tracy Takama Espinosa, and one of my favorite things to talk about is the brain. I just love the brain. So what are these core concepts within this field of mind, brain, and education science that should be informing teachers these days? What do we need to know about the mind, about psychology that can help us in classroom settings? What do we need to know about the brain, things that come from neuroscience that can help us in educational settings? And education, how has education changed that we can combine mind, brain, and education now to have a new view on what we should know about human learning in order to help our students find the most success possible? This workshop will look at the introduction to mind brain education science and start off with some bigger ideas. You know, what is it, the basics that we should all know about our own brains? This is based on a new way to look at teachers' professional development that really turns us into more learning scientists. Because after all, you know, the brain is the organ of our existence, right? So we need to know a bit more about neuromyths and how those are born of some of our attitudes about how we think people learn. Not always correctly, right? Then what are the basic principles, which are six simple ideas that have been proven in neuroscience that approved of, of coming into the classroom? These are good pieces of information that all teachers should know. And then what are the tenets? Tenets are things that have to do with truths about mind, brain, and education science, truths about how humans learn, but there's a big range of human variation. For example, we all know that sleep and dreaming influence learning, but do you know why? Uh, and do you know what's normal? For example, four and a half to 12 hours of sleep is totally normal. Uh, maybe eight is average, but we can't dictate to other people about the tenants because there's such a huge range of human variants. What motivates you, for example, might not motivate me. What stresses you might not stress me, right? So we have to look at the tenants in a different way from the principles. Principles are things that are true for all human brains throughout the lifespan. And tenants are also true, but there's a huge range of human variation. Then we have to look at all of that within a cultural context. How does our context, how does where we live, how does how we write or the language we speak in change the way that we can now interpret the principles and the tenets? And finally, if we know all of that, then we can get into the real instructional guidelines. What should we now do within our classrooms to reach those objectives that we've stated for ourselves? So this is kind of the new broad overview of what it would look like if we had mind brain education scientists in our schools. This means that I hope that I can convince you all that designing an educational experience, what do I do in class tomorrow, without understanding the brain is very much like trying to design a glove without understanding how the hand is structured. We have to know a bit more about the human brain, and that's what we're going to look at. The 10 things that we'll explore that are basics about the human brain have to do with sleep, nutrition, stress, anxiety, social contagion, physical activity, drugs, motivation, human variation, human potential, and then knowing yourself. Uh, in order to actually use that information. But rather than start there, and rather than start off with, with definitions, I'd prefer to share the information with you here in the video so that when we're together, we can see about your own questions about the brain and how it learns. So here's the conceptual background. The learning sciences is anything that has to do with how humans learn, right? It's the life and it's neural sciences, that's biology, nutrition, right? But it's also neurosciences, it's also, that includes neurobiology, for example, the chemicals in your brain. And the learning sciences also include things like education or pedagogy, didactics and psychology, right? And developmental processes of the brain. But it also includes things like understanding the natural sciences, which means to be a learning scientist means knowing a bit about all of that. My main goal is to look at this really sweet spot right here in the middle, mind brain education science, because while all of these other areas study how the human brain learns, mind brain and education science is really preoccupied with how we should teach in order to take advantage of that information, right? And we don't like calling things like uh, neuroeducation or educational neuroscience because it actually makes one a subfield of the other, whereas when you have like mind, comma, brain, comma, and education, you're really putting them on an even playing field. And that's the idea of mind-brain education science, that no one field is bigger or more important than the other, but that they all play a role in helping us become better teachers. So what I hope we spend most of our time doing is I'm going to ask you something you know about the brain and learning, you know, and something you want to know about the brain and learning. And we're going to start from your questions, your understanding about the brain, and build off of that for the rest of the workshop. 
Some of the bigger concepts I hope we get to talk about have to do with human potential. Uh, the big question, are you who you are because of your nature, the genes that you inherited, or because of the nurture, because of the schools you went to, or the neighborhood you grew up in? And understanding yourself better. I mean, Socrates was not far off, you know. Know yourself well in order to understand your own potentials in all these areas. And we'll explore this by introducing another concept. This is called risk and protective factors. So understanding what are the things that are in your life that are a risk to your own learning? And what are the things that are protective factors? And could you use a protective factor to get rid of risk factors, right? So we'll look at that and we'll look at how you can help your own students understand those things as well. There may be some things that might be a roadblock to learning. How do we get around that? How do you avoid that? But first you have to identify it, which is why we begin with knowing thyself, okay? And then finally, we're gonna round this out by looking at the activities that you already use do you know how the activities that you use in the class actually influence the brains in your class? This gets a bit deeper. It's not just saying, let's do project-based learning or let's do collaborative learning or whatever because it sounds good, it's right, it's good pedagogically speaking. But do you know what that's doing to your brain? So we're gonna ask you to think about something you know works in your class. And then I'm gonna ask you to think a little bit, why? Why do you think it works in your brain? What's your hypothesis? What do you want to know so that you can convince yourself that you are choosing the best activities because it does enhance student learning outcomes at the level of the brain? So we'll clarify some of the better activities that can occur in class that would really enhance student learning outcomes based on the information we now have from neuroscience. So my personal goal with all of this is to make you guys, you know, shout from the rooftops. I am a mind brain education scientist. I'm a learning scientist um, at the end of the day here. I hope that you can fall in love with your own brains and that you learn a little bit about your own brains and how they work, some basics about them, but also how it is that what you do in your class, the influence that you have on a daily basis that changes the human brain. Remember, the brain adapts to what it does most. So the exposure your students have with you has a huge influence in what they now will know and learn. But we know that the more you know, the more you can know. So what it is they do with you will influence the potential to be able to learn things in the future. Very, very big and powerful information. I look forward to this workshop with you. If you have any questions before we start, please go ahead and write me an email. Otherwise, I look forward to working with you. Thanks.